Every August, Lake Washington witnesses the arrival of the unlimited hydroplane traveling circus. And when the turbine-powered Big Top rolls in with the fastest boats in the world, you know what it means. Seattle, seafair and speed. Today, the pits are transformed as the 2012 Air National Guard Hydroplane Series takes the center ring. Sportsnet presents the Air National Guard Series. Today, it's the 62nd running for the Albert Lee Cup on Lake Washington in Seattle. Hi, everybody. I'm Bill Weber. Thanks for having us in for the race. Seattle is the home of hydroplane racing. To give you an idea of how important this race is, if this was the PGA Tour, this would be a major when every driver, owner, and crew member wants to win. Now, one week ago at Tri-Cities, 26-year-old rookie Jimmy Shane got the thrill of his lifetime, his first ever unlimited hydroplane win. And the trophies for that win are here in Seattle, one in the back of the team truck and the big one in the Graham Trucking Hospitality Tent. But every team knows that race is history. Today, the spotlight squarely on Seattle and we winning on Lake Washington, because when your career is over, you want to reminisce about the ones you won, not the one you didn't. Most of the boats are based here. Our sponsor is based here. Uh, crew chief is based here. This really, I think, if the Gold Cup's the, the Daytona 500, this is our Indianapolis 500. It's uh, the hometown race for, for Rob Graham, and uh, I know he would really, really want to I mean, he, he loved winning Tri-Cities, but he would just be ecstatic. This is what he, he lives for, uh, seafaring this weekend. It's just the greatest place to win, but it's a hard thing, you know, especially with six-boat heats and all of that all day long. It's just to survive it, to get into the final is a tough deal. Today, Steve David goes for a three-peat in Seattle. Dave Vilwak has won here eight times. Both tremendous accomplishments in a competitive field on a cramped course. For more on that, here's my partner, Mike Allen. Thank you, Bill. This weekend here in Seattle, we have very crowded six boat heats. The boat's 30 feet long. It's 14 feet wide. So imagine yourself in the cockpit with 3,000 horsepower strapped to your back. You're barreling down into the first turn at 200 miles per hour with a boat that weighs 7,000 pounds, and you're deck to deck with five other drivers. There aren't any lines painted on the water. You know your lane. You just hope the other guys know theirs. So you have to turn the boat Look to your left and look to your right and forget your spotter because he can't see a thing. And as a driver, it's a huge rush going into the first turn. And it's a big relief coming out of the first turn. But you're just getting started. Getting started on a two mile course here. The headlines, Mike, water, wind, and the log boom. Yeah, Bill, beautiful race course. The driver's gonna be watching out for wind in this first turn. And of course, the ever famous log boom down the back straightaway. Here's the event format. Three sets of qualifying heats, six boats per heat. The top six in points will make it to the final and qualifying points do count. There will be a provisional race for a trailer spot in the final. In Heat 1A, two-time defending champion Steve David dominated, leading J. Michael Kelly from the very start of the race. Now, it looked like the best battle on the course would be for third. John Zimmerman in the nine, the white boat, and the green 21 of Brian Perkins. Zimmerman got that position, and coming to the checkers, right here, Zimmerman is able to edge J. Michael Kelly and take second place and get 300 points. And while Steve David was winning the race, he's also a fan, and he was watching this race in his rearview mirror, and after the checkered flag and the boats got back to the dock, David congratulated Zimmerman on his fine run. It had a lot more in there. I mean, the Alberto was running terrific, but boy, give credit to John Zimmerman in that second place. He gave the 37, which almost won last week, one heck of a race, and I just wanted to stay out of the way. So I stayed enough in the front and watching that race in the mirror, and that was pretty cool watching. After Heat 1A, J. Michael Kelly said he never knew Zimmerman was coming until he saw him in the mirror, and by then, it was too late, and he gave up the position. In Heat 1B, you have to watch for this kind of stuff all day. The milling about before the start and the start of the race, very tight. Whacking this coming to the start as Nate Brown pinches down on J.W. Myers, who then gets hit by Scott Lidicote. Myers eventually lost the underside of the rear wing. 
Once the race started, a good battle between Lydico, Jimmy Shane, and Dave Billwalk for the lead. But Billwalk broke clear, had the power and the poise, and took home the win. He's been very good on Lake Washington. Twice he's won three Seattle races in a row in 98, 99, and 2000, and 02, 03, and 04. Look at this battle. Lydico just nips Myers. That's for third. And watch this. Jimmy Shane runs over the broken parts of Myers' wing. Now, here's the wing back in the pits. You can actually see the prop scars in the underside of the wing. It has been a tough season for the Peters and May guys. Upside down in Detroit, a rough weekend last time out in Tri-Cities, and now a rough start here in Seattle. That's the 88, the degree men of Scott Liddicoat, and they work on the rear of that boat. Here are the results from Heat 1B. Meanwhile, one veteran says he may have taken the checkered flag, maybe for the final time. Basically, guys, it's, it's hard to be an owner driver at Richie. It's, it's, it's got so many different agendas and so many different things, and I got, I wasn't doing a good job. I mean, frankly, uh, three blown starts in Tri-Cities and that blown one jump in the gun here. Um, being the owner, if I had a driver that did that, I'd have to, you know, talk to him or take him out of the cockpit. And it's, <laughs> it's really hard to say, hey, Nate, guess what? You kind of messed up. You should be out of the cockpit. And so I did. I, I pulled myself out of the cockpit. Veteran Jeff Bernard will take Nate's place. Nate was substituting for Kip Brown, who hopes to be back in time for San Diego. Now, here are the points after the first set of heats. Qualifying points are included. It's Bill Walk on top, David second, Jimmy Shane third. Now, this is something you don't expect to see. The degree men doesn't go out until 2B, but even still, they pulled the engine out of the boat, and they appear to be working on the gearbox. That's not something that's in the plans. Coming up, heat 2A, a rematch of Bill Walk and Jimmy Shane. Times it's the smartest guy. Here's Nate Brown with our crew chief, Confidential. With these park and starts we have now with the air guard boats, we have to go slow. It's not all about how fast you can go, it's how slow you can go. So we've had to make modification changes to our hulls. The U57 is a good example of a stock boat, one that hasn't been modified yet. It has very shallow spray rails, they're not very sharp. Here on the U17 Miss Red Dot, we've extended our spray rails, we've sharpened them up a lot, we've deepened them, we've extended them, and it really helps us go slow. The U6 of Boyo Berto has gone one step farther and they've actually added spray rails to the very front of the Sponson. And I just noticed this weekend, the U88 has made some caps for the front of their Sponsons that are even deeper, sharper, and they even have a plate on the side of their Sponson to try to keep water from getting on the canopy. Because all it takes is a little bit of water on the canopy, you can't see a thing. And that's why we have to make these modifications. What he's talking about, Bill, is very important. At these slow speeds, these waters coming over these sponsons, you can hardly see where you're going, and that's the way we've been starting here lately. These parking starts, it's very important. And you see the Peters and May countdown clock there. They're going to be at these speeds for a long time, maybe a minute. They are. And, you know, every race it seems like they're getting up there sooner and sooner, so you've got to be able to almost idle and still be able to see where you're going. Countdown clock inside a minute 10. Remember, you cannot pass that yellow score of buoy in the center of your screen until the clock gets to the one minute mark. That's J.W. Myers on the far outside. That's going to be close. He might have been over. Yeah, it might be really close, Bill. What he was trying to do here was leapfrog everybody, but if you're early, then it won't matter. Well, he's only going to get one lane because you have to have five boat links to move over, and he's not going to get that on anybody else. Here are the GoPro onboard cameras. That's Greg Hopp, Steve David in the old boy Alberto. He's in lane two. John Zimmerman has that white boat, the number nine, the Seattle Suntan. And then Jeff Bernard making its season debut, but he's off the pace. He is, Bill. Looks like he flamed out on the first turn here, trying to come up for the start. So he's going to play major catch up here. And J.W. Myers in the number 11, Peters and May ride. And don't forget, on the far outside, the 57 of Mark Evans, and he's going to be carrying a lot of speed as they take the green flag. 15 seconds on the countdown clock. On board with Jeff Bernard. This is where it gets tough, Bill. If you're not there to get to the line with these guys, they're not going to leave you a lane. And there was no lane there for Bernard in the Miss Red Dot. Countdown clock approaching zero. Green flag in the air. Once again, Bill, look at this outside boat here. It's a legal start. On board with JW. And he's going to lose his lane, too. It looked like Mark Evans might have moved over on him. Have to wait for the official call. Here are your leaders, all four of them. Look at this, down the backstretch on Lake Washington. On board with Greg Hopp in the inside lane, and there goes Steve David screaming by on the outside. But he's got some company out there, Zimmerman and Mark Evans. Water's looking pretty rough, Bill, down that back straightaway. 
Again, that's where the log boom is. The water hits that log boom and then careens back onto the course. Hop has the inside lane, but Steve David has the boat speed. There's the old boy, Alberto Miss Madison, and there's John Zimmerman in the Seattle Suntan machine. Great shot here, Bill. This is why they call them three-point hydroplanes. They're working on the back edge of those sponsons and the tip of the propeller. Three points, contact in the water. Lap one for Steve David, 133.180 miles per hour. Greg Hopp had the second fastest lap, then John Zimmerman had the third fastest lap. Ride with Hopp, talented driver, but an older boat, not a lot of shoot speed. And how about the nine of John Zimmerman? Yeah, it's not a big surprise, Bill, to a lot of people that they're running so well. They have members on this team that were former members of the famous Miss Budweiser that did so well for many, many years. And that's really paying off for Zimmerman and company on board with Greg Hopp. Now, we have heard from race officials there will be a penalty on the 57 of Mark Evans for lane encroachment and also J.W. Myers, a one-lap penalty for jumping the one-minute gun. So Steve David is your race leader. He has been smooth from the start. He's about to put a lap on J.W. Myers, who got his boat refired. Zimmerman runs in second, and Mike, listen to these speeds on lap two. For Steve David, 138.9. For John Zimmerman, 137.2, the fastest two laps of the heat so far. Considerably slower build than their qualifying speeds. Six boats on a race course. We're in lap three. She's going to get rough. And it's going to be even rougher in the final, no doubt. 47-year-old John Zimmerman chasing 58-year-old Steve David. He will turn 59 in January, looking for his 15th career win and his third consecutive win on Lake Washington in Seattle. Still running that saltwater scoop that comes over the top of the cockpit, but it has worked for the Miss Madison O'Boy Alberto team all season long. Zimmerman charging, but he's not going to get there. Checkered flag in the air and a win for Steve David and 400 points. And another strong performance from John Zimmerman, who continues to be one of the big stories in this 2012 Unlimited Hydroplane season. Meanwhile, they continue to work on the 88 of Scott Liddycoat, and I don't think they've solved their problem. Scott and his wife, Kim, look concerned. We'll get the story when we get back. It's a terrific crowd along the shoreline of Lake Washington, which is 22 miles long and has a surface area of more than 33 square miles. These fans having a fun day in the sun here in Seattle. Not so much fun for the 88 bunch. They're still on the hook, but Scott Liddycoat headed for his boat. Looks like they're going to be okay. They haven't put the cowling on yet, and we're getting close to the start of this heat. You see Dave Vilwak leaving the dock, and there is the 21 machine for Brian Perkins. They're running a limited schedule in 2012. They have big plans for 2013, including what could be a new haul. But they love racing in Seattle. They're carrying the race sponsor on their boat. Let's meet Team Albert Lee. If we weren't such good friends with Albert Lee, it would probably be uh, a lot of pressure. But Albert is an awesome guy. Um, he's become a friend to everybody on the team. He puts on the, sponsors the race, sponsors the boat, helps out with all the other events that Seafair does. He's just a phenomenal uh, influx into the Seafair community. Albert Lee got into this for business reasons, and it really paid off. Last year was the first year that they brought vendors in, and every one of them wanted to come back and be a part of this. Some of the guys that have come in the past are like, I had no idea. I was very surprised. I thought it was a little boat race, a little air show, and they're like, wow, uh, I'm shocked. So that's good. In racing, teamwork wins on the water and off. And for this team, this is more than just a handshake deal. Albert is uh, definitely a big supporter of the race team, and if we need something, he's right there to help us. I'll give you a good example. Yesterday, he came down and said, how can we help you more and bought me a $15,000 propeller so we can try to go faster. That's the kind of guy he is. We're able to find one of the older props that, that actually design-wise will get him out of the corner and that just gets a little more power out of it. So they went out and they said, ran good, and so that makes us both happy. This entire team is like family, learning and growing. We did good last year in one of the heats we won with all the hot dogs. I think two years ago, we came in second in the whole race. That was the first year that Albert was involved. So we represented him well. He's been real happy, and uh, if he's happy, I'm happy. Brian Perkins got his start at Unlimited Racing by sweeping floors and cleaning parts at the old U8 shop under owner Bill Worcester. 
And now look at him. On the water here in Lake Washington, 40 seconds away from taking the green flag. One boat that will not be taking the green flag. The 88 degree men, they could not get it started. So we'll have to check in with Scott Lillicoat after this heat is over, find out what happened. Meanwhile, these boats are on the water going real slow, and you can see that water coming right up against those cockpits. That's Ryan Mallow, the box heating and plumbing two. There's Brian Perkins in the Albert Lee machine with that new propeller. We'll see how that works again. Now, there's the water. That's J. Michael Kelly. Yeah, that's the water we were trying to keep off the windshield, Bill, as you can see those deflectors that were put on the front of those sponsons prior to. Everybody getting up to speed. The Peters and May countdown clock is at zero. Green flag in the air. Heartbreaking for Scott Lidico. That's Bob Katapovic, one of his crew members. Worked hard to try and get that boat out there, but they couldn't do it. Brian Perkins with that new $15,000 propeller. He's out in lane four. Something must be working there, Bill, because he's leading them from out in four. Jimmy Shane in lane two. J. Michael Kelly on the inside. Look at these three move through the turn. Now down the back stretch here on Lake Washington. On board with Kelly. Shane tries to pull away. Two big stories here. Shane leading, and look who's back in fourth. Dave Vilwak. Yeah, look back there, Bill. I'm not sure why Brian Perkins isn't coming over right now. He's got the seven boat overlap, but he's going to leave that hole for Dave, and that could be a mistake. That's going to cost him a lot of time on this course because he's staying way outside and going wide. Look at Perkins all the way out of the picture on the left-hand side, and here comes Vilwak. Man, he is really flying that spirit of Qatar. I'm not sure how he got that far back, Bill, but I can tell you he doesn't like it. Mike, listen to these speeds on lap two. For Jimmy Shane, 138.1. J. Michael Kelly, 138.3. And for Dave Vilwak making the pass right there on Perkins, lap two, 150.244 miles per hour. That's why he's flying. That just means he's airing it out, Bill, because that's about a mile an hour off from his qualifying speeds when there's only one boat on the water. And he's also looking for what I'm going to be able to get out of this thing in the final. On board with J. Michael Kelly in the Beacon Plumbing. He's got second place. Dave Vilwak wants second place. Vilwak on the outside. He's the third boat there. Jimmy Shane, then J. Michael Kelly, then Dave Vilwak working the third and final lap of this qualifying heat. Now you want to talk about a boat that's set up correctly. When you can see clean underneath the boat from the side, that boat is running well and set up well. On board with J. Michael Kelly. Already has a third place finish in one of his qualifying heats today. Trying to hold off the walk and catch Jimmy Shane. You ride in the cockpit with Mike Kelly. Now remember, he got passed at the checkered flag in his first heat by John Zimmerman. That cost him a position. Here comes Phil Watt trying to catch him for second place. You can also see the wake of Jimmy Shane, who is the heat leader. And Phil Watt takes the position. Down the back stretch, headed for turn two. From the Whispering Turbine Skycam, does Phil Watt have enough time to catch Jimmy Shane? Shane has the lane advantage, but Vilwak had a tremendous second lap. Does he have anything left in the third? Now Mike Kelly coming back on Vilwak. J. Michael Kelly's got the shortest distance around the race course, but we got raw horsepower in the Vilwak machine on the outside. Shane's got the win. Here's Vilwak and Kelly at the line. And it's Vilwak in the spirit of Qatar. It happened to J. Michael Kelly again. He gets nipped at the line for second place. 400 big points for Jimmy Shane. Shane and Bill Walk each with a first and second place finish in their first two heats. You see the points after the second set of heats. The top six drivers will make the final. Will Scott Lidico be one of them? I did not start in heat 2B. Well, we went uh, tested this morning. Everything seemed pretty good. And then a trailer fired before that heat. And I uh, realized the oil pump on the gearbox was, was shot. So uh, to, to speed up changing uh, oil, uh, the gearbox, we pulled the motor so you can align the shaft quicker. And it looks like somehow when we pulled the motor, we damaged the throttle cable. They didn't realize that right till the last minute. So they, they got the gearbox and motor back in. We had plenty of time, and then a little $3 part kept us from making that heat. It's always like that. Everybody trying to show their muscle here in Seattle, some doing it better than others. 3A coming up when we come back to Seafair. Well, thank you very much. And there is the Graham Trucking number five for Jimmy Shane on the water. First and second place finish so far. Also out there, the 100 of Greg Hopp, who has an interesting occupation. If he's not flying along the water, he's, well, winging it at Boeing. Here's your unlimited access pass. This is Everett Boeing facility, world's largest building. This is where I work. 
So I'm a 767 lead for wings and uh, do the very start of the wing, the build up process and all the way through wing majors. And basically I build the top half and the bottom half of the wing. We start with raw material. Uh, we load stringers and then uh, load panels in. We tack rivet those to, to the stringers and then we pick it up, send it to a machine we call a gem core machine that pumps in approximately 12,000 rivets. This machine is amazing. It, it drills, countersinks, installs the rivet and shaves it in like four seconds. Just amazing. Then it comes, a crane again picks it up, turns it up vertical, brings it over to our EMR position here, where we put our rivets in with our man lift. Then it picks it back up again, moves over to panel pickup, and that's where we complete our process. Airplanes or hydroplanes, Greg is professional and popular. He is <laughs> like a jack of all trades. Every, everything except for the 8.7 I've worked on in this factory. We're 4.7, well, we seven, to seven, seven. Seven. No, you're not going to 8.7. No, no. You're going to stay here. right here with 6.7. We love it. Greg wanted to follow in his father's racing footsteps. Boeing, well, Boeing was plan B. And I made an application into Boeing and uh, got hired on in April. And so unfortunately, my racing career took a little bit of a dive there. And I was only going to be there five years and out. You know, I was going to get rich and famous boat racing, and that never seemed to work out. So 25 years later, I'm still working at Boeing. <laughs> Started racing at the age of nine. He's a lucky guy. He has two jobs that he really loves. Getting ready for heat 3A. And look at this. The top three drivers in points are all in this heat. Steve David, Dave Gilwalk, Jimmy Shane. There's Steve David on the outside. Looks like he might be thinking about leapfrogging here. I don't think there's much thinking involved. He's definitely coming up to leapfrog, Bill. So this is part of our pre-race plan where he wants to get five boat links on those boats to his left so he can move all the way over as far as possible, maybe to lane one if he can get there. Lane one would be his ideal oh. choice, but wow, look at here. Dave Billwalk moving over on Jimmy Shane. That's a fine how do you do coming down the back straight away from Mr. Billwalk. All boats were legal at the one minute mark. This is on board with David, trying to leapfrog the competitors on his left and get a better lane choice. That's J.W. Myers, he appears to have lane one. I don't think Steve's gonna get over that far. Looks like he went all the way as far as lane two, though. Boy, it looked like he thought he had lane one and then turned back. On board with Jimmy Shane, oh! Whoa, look at this. Bumper boats, what's that all about? That's three boats for two lanes. I don't know what's coming down there, Bill, but we're gonna have to iron this one out later. That's coming out of turn two, less than 15 seconds before the start of the race. Steve David's back in the gas. He's got lane two. That's J.W. Myers, Peterson May in lane one. On board with Bill Walk. He's to the outside. Green flag in the air, it's a legal start, and Steve David nailed it. Looks like he was the winner out of that uh, crunching bunch back there, Bill. Into turn one. Now J.W. Myers on the inside. He's got lane one. Steve David has lane two. Now they exit one and head down the back stretch of the log boom to their right. Steve David and Dave Milwaukee. Two of the all-time best. From the whispering turbine sky cam, you see Steve David and the Alberto Miss Madison in front, then the spirit of guitar, Dave Vilwak runs second. That's on the water. We don't know what the race officials are gonna decide about what happened in turn two before the start. Still, these guys are gonna drive as hard as they can. In the cockpit with Jimmy Shane and the Graham trucking. This is one of those situations, Bill, where as a driver, you run as hard as you can. Don't worry about anything they say until the race is over, then we'll settle it when we get back to the dock. And this is the race we expect to see in the final. Steve David head-to-head -head with Dave Dilwak. First lap for Steve David, 143 miles an hour. 139.0 for Dilwak. Dave getting a little air under that boat down the back stretch. Gets a little rough back there with the log boom. A little rough back there, Bill, because he's having to deal with these wakes that are coming right back off the log boom, right smack in your face. Bottom of your screen, Jimmy Shane runs in third, then the battle for fourth. J.W. Myers on the right, John Zimmerman on the left. That's on board the Seattle Suntan for John Zimmerman, driving for Mike and Lori Jones. That boat has been very good this weekend. This is J.W. Myers on the inside in lane one. And there are your two race leaders, at least on the water. Again, we're expecting some kind of penalties when this thing is over, but we don't know what or against whom. This is about the part of the race course, Bill, where we've been talking about 
the boats get a little bit light going into this first turn. Never fails every lap, and the more boats you have, the worse it's going to get. And while this might be a battle for fourth on the course, these guys know there might be more points out there if the guys in front of them are going to be penalized. Yeah, there's so much uh, going on in this particular heat that you really can't rely on your spotter. So, again, you run as hard as you can, and we'll figure it out later. Boy, talking about running hard, Greg Hopp trying to make the shorter course and really going through some rough water to get an inside lane. Second lap for race leader Steve David, 136.8 miles per hour. We are hearing some teams want to talk to the driver's rep. The driver's rep is the liaison between teams and race officials. Meanwhile, checkered flag in the air. It does wave for Steve David. Second place to Dave Vilwak. Jimmy Shane already has a first and a second. We'll take third in this heat. And there's the battle for fourth coming to the checkers. Severman out races J.W. Myers the second time he's done that this weekend. And a fifth place finish for Greg Hopp. Oh, there's the Air National Guard signboard. Really a giant card we sign this at every race, every weekend, just to say thanks to all of our troops overseas for everything they've done for our families and our country. Not all of our troops are overseas. Some have come home to accept their just awards. We're proud to introduce you to Staff Sergeant Jonathan Broom, a real hero. Being that's a tactical air control party member. I spend all my time with our sister services, ground combat units. We'll go on patrols with them. We do all the missions they do. We go everywhere they go. And when they get into a fight that's too big for them to handle, we'll call on airstrikes and uh, even, even it up a bit for them. The Air Force Commendation Medal with Valor has been awarded to Staff Sergeant Jonathan C. Broom for Act of Courage, 1 June 2011. Tell me about the award ceremony and your feelings about this morning. Right, so this morning I was awarded our Air Force Commendation Medal with Valor uh, for a mission that I was on over in Afghanistan. Our convoy was ambushed. I got out of my armored vehicle so I could spot the targets for the incoming uh, Apache attack helicopters, and that was that. So uh, how do I feel about it? I, I was just doing my job. That's what I was trained to do, and that's what I was there to do. So for me, it was just, you know, I, I was there doing what I was supposed to do, and so it's not a big deal to me, but it seems to be a big deal to other people. It's a big deal to all of us. You're an outstanding example of the opportunities the Air National Guard offers. Yeah, that's correct. I mean, there's opportunities for everybody out here. Whether you want to do something like what I do, cyberspace is another big mission we have here in Washington State. So if that's your, if that's your game, we got that too. But if nothing else, it can provide you with a way to pay for college, a road to go down if you're really not sure what you want to do. And, you know, it, it's just great. I, I've loved it the whole time. Well, after you meet the staff sergeant, you can't help but sign that board. I told you we do it every weekend, and our crack crew actually caught video of my wife and I signing that card in Seattle. Here's Mike with Steve David. Hey, Steve, that's three for three and, and an absolutely commanding performance in that heat. You know, sometimes a blind squirrel finds that nut every once in a while. We had contact with 11, our left sponsor, but we got four hours to fix it. We're in great shape. The Alberta's running phenomenal. It was set up for that stuff. And, you know, with these confusing starts, you just got to confuse the other guys and not let yourself get confused. And, and that time at work, this final is going to be wild. I'll tell you what, I'm a little confused. We told you at the beginning of the day, you're going to have to watch these millings and these score-up buoys. A lot of traffic on the lake. Back down to Mike with uh, Dave Vilwak. So our start before the start comes into play again. Yeah, it was fun. Yeah, just a hint of sarcasm, and I can tell you why. Don't pass out those points yet. Could be some penalties coming up when we come back to Lake Washington. Always a terrific turnout when the Air National Guard Series comes to Lake Washington in Seattle. These fans have it a fun time. Not so much fun in the pits. For Dave Bilwak in the spirit of Qatar, a one-lap penalty, 100-point deduction for a lane infraction causing a collision. For Steve David, a one-lap penalty, lane infraction on the one and the five before the commitment buoy. That gives Jimmy Shane 400 points and John Zimmerman 300. Mike, a lot of judgment call in this. Yeah, there's a huge gray area here, Bill. Did Steve David have five boat lengths on the overlap or not? I'm sure he thinks he did. The other drivers didn't think he did. In this situation, everybody thinks they were right. What they're saying is that um, I didn't have a five boat overlap when I did the whole shot and came into lane two. Um, we have our uh, onboard footage mounted to the engine cowling facing backwards and clearly there was a five boat length, but, but it is what it is. Were you surprised? Oh, totally. We got a checkered flag. It was about five minutes afterwards that we learned about it. Uh, already did live interviews uh, uh, and, uh, and then you hear about it. But. So let's take a look at the Vilwak penalty. Here we are riding with Jimmy Shane. Jimmy's coming up. As you can tell, he goes right past J-Dub. He's looking for a hole here. Looks like there's one, and all of a sudden, out of nowhere, 
that gap is closed, it's gone away, and Dave Vilwalk ended up with the penalty. They said in the driver's meeting, the at the entrance pin, you establish your lane of turn two. I was running up the back straight away in lane two, you know, two and a half. Steve David jumps over, leapfrogs, and jumps into lane two. I drive up alongside of him right at the entrance pin that establishes me in lane three. And at that moment, the five drove through the rooster tail of the six and then into the side of me. But they say that I was supposed to leave room for the five. But clearly by the rules and what we were told, our lane was established at that entrance pin. And if you look at that, you can see that that's where we were. And so unfortunately we got run into and Alberta got run into and uh, kind of like the second punch gets the foul, I guess. Well, on board here with uh, J.W. Myers, one more look. The story for J.W. is he ended up third with 225 points and was glad he didn't get caught up in that mess. Meanwhile, he's about to do a little traveling. Yeah, the idea is that we take the boat to Coniston in the U.K., which is obviously a famous water there, and uh, it's the first time an unlimited hydroplane's been run in, uh, in the U.K. It's pretty exciting for us. Good for the sport, get some exposure out there in Europe, which is all we're about, and uh, hopefully set a new British national record. We're also going to take our 350 hydroplane as well with Aaron Salmon and uh, go for the uh, the world record on that one. So it's a kilo race. It'll be, uh, it'll be quite good fun. Getting ready for heat 3B and for driver Scott Liddicote, it's just about a must-win situation if he hopes to make the final here in Seattle. More than 600,000 people call Seattle home. The metropolitan area, more than 3.4 million, and a lot of them are here today. And you know what? Most of them are following us on Twitter, and they like us on Facebook, and we'll look for you there. They really enjoy racing here on Lake Washington in Seattle, and it is time to go racing. Highlights from Heat 3B. Remember, Scott Lidico did not start in 2B. Well, here, he's outside the out-of-bounds buoy. Now he's coming back into the course. That's not going to play well with race officials. On board with Mark Evans in the 57, and he's going to move over on Ryan Mallow, and Mallow spins out in the middle of turn one, and his boat stalls. J. Michael Kelly in the 37, Beacon Plumbing. They're in that boat out a little bit. He's got a good lead, but watch this. As they come through the turn where Mallow's boat is dead in the water, J. Michael Kelly on board with him. He goes inside of Mallow. Brian Perkins just to the outside and manages to stay out of that rooster tail. Meanwhile, up front, no more problems for J. Michael Kelly in the Beacon Plumbing. And he cruises to the checkered flag and 400 points. Second place goes to the Miss Albert Lee for Brian Perkins. He gets 300. That hole for the 88 degree men has got Lillycoat deeper and deeper. The penalty that forces him to compete in the provisional. And this was really a very good two boat race between Greg Hopp of the U100 and there's Lillycoat in the 88 degree men. They went back and forth and back and forth for three laps until in the Final turn of the final lap, Greg Hopp lost the gearbox. That took him out of the race, and Scott Liddicoat was able to race his way into the seven-boat final. So despite a disappointing day, Liddicoat, 11th in points overall, does make the final. Top six boats start on the front row, Shane, David, Zimmerman, Kelly, Vilwak, and Perkins. Now about one of the best teams in the business. Here's Steve Montgomery. Once again in 2012, the boat to beat on the Air National Guard hydroplane tour is Eric Elstrom's one Spirit of Qatar 96, whether it's qualifying or racing. Now, we're going to leave the driver out of this discussion. Arguably, you have one of the best who ever did this. But the race boat is always fast. So once and for all, what's the secret? Wow, big question. Uh, uh, a lot of pieces to the puzzle. A thousand things have to go right. Uh, it's from the crew to the guy that fills the fuel. Uh, uh, everything just has to work, and uh, 20 years of doing it together makes it work. People talk about your propellers, your gearing, your technology, and I'm sure all that's a factor. It, it all plays a role. I mean, uh, it's the amount of tools you have in the toolbox, and so we try to come to every race with all the right tools, and if we don't have them, we'll make them. There's a lot more to it than that, but they've been very successful. Bill Walk has eight wins in Seattle. He's about to try for number nine. been a wild weekend in Seattle and the fans at Seafair are loving it. And now 
it's time for the seven boat final. Six boats on the front row and one trailer. Dave Billwatt, Jimmy Shane, Steve David, John Zimmerman, Brian Perkins, and J. Michael Kelly all start on the front row. Scott Liddycote will be the trailer. Now, Mike, normally drivers don't give you any hints as to how they're going to handle the start in the final, but you had a chance to talk to Steve David, and he gave you a plan A and plan B. I did, Bill. He gave me plan A, and plan A looks like it's going to work right here. This is exactly what Steve was trying to do. He wanted us to nail this clock at the one-minute mark and leapfrog the entire field. Well, guess what? He just pulled it off. He was legal, and I believe he's going to go all the way to lane one, which is going to make a huge difference in the outcome of this race. Now, he tried this earlier in the day and got penalized. You're right, he got called for a lane infraction, but I'm sure he's not gonna let that happen twice. David has gotten all the way over to lane number one. There's J. Michael Kelly, he had a little bob and weave move there. And he may be trying to leapfrog. Well, talk about make a lane if you want one. Boy, <laughs> good racing and uh, still 30 seconds left on the Peters and May countdown clock. You see the boats coming through turn two. That's on board the trailer. Scott Liddycote, the green men. Jimmy Shane, Graham Trucking, looking back at Bill Walk. They start to pick up speed. On board with Bill Walk in the spirit of Qatar. Ten seconds to go on the countdown clock, and you can see Steve David was able to protect and hold on to that very valuable inside lane. That's on board with J. Michael Kelly and the Beacon Plumbing. Green flag in the air. Start looks good. All boats are legal. Looks like Jimmy Shane nailed the clock again, Bill. A five-lap final on this two-mile course. On board with Phil Watt, looking at Shane. Through turn one. Now down the back stretch, the log boom on the right. Look at this, three-boat race for the lead. But look at Jimmy Shane out front. That's all because of his start. And just because you got a good start, Bill, doesn't mean you're gonna win this race. You got two of the fastest boats on your inside and on your outside, all looking to win this ever important final. From the whispering turbine sky cam. Through turn two and now to the front stretch. Steve David taking command. But Jimmy Shane and Dave the Watt coming right back at him. You know Steve David's loving this, Bill, because he's got Jimmy Shane in lane two, which is gonna put Phil Walk even further to his outside, which is gonna help him try and win this race. First lap for Steve David, 141.252 miles per hour. That is really hustling on some rough water with seven boats out there. There's a good shot of the front wing, the front canard here, Bill. As Jimmy, Jimmy's coming out of this turn, he's got that wing in the up position. He was packing as much air as he could underneath the hull. Now about mid-track, he's got the front of that wing coming down to keep it back on the water. Steve David continues to lead in the Oh Boy Alberto Miss Madison, that boat owned by the citizens of Madison, Indiana. And Steve's trying to pick up his first win since Seattle one year ago. He's also looking for his third straight victory here. And this boat has performed very well this weekend. They seem to be holding their exact same positions, Bill, after the last couple laps. Nobody's really gaining or losing here. Lap two for Steve David, 133.7 miles per hour. Scott Liddycote, degree men. Difficult day, but they did make the final by winning the provisional. Now on board with John Zimmerman, a boat that's been very strong this weekend. That's the Seattle Suntan ride. There's 58-year-old Steve David looking for his 15th career win. Now Jimmy Shane, who got his first career win last time out in Tri-Cities, his first full year racing in Unlimited. And of course, Dave Gowak, the all-time winningest driver with 67 career wins. The leader is heading through turn number two. On board with J. Michael Kelly, he's been penalized one lap for a lane infraction prior to the start of this final. So that moves Brian Perkins in the 21, Albert Lee machine, up to fourth position in the final. There's your race leader, Steve David, and there's some of his crew watching from the lift on shore. Back on board with David. Smooth water for him out front. This is when you start hearing gremlins, Bill. You're not sure what, what's happening in the boat. You're just praying that it stays together for the rest of this heat. On the last lap, Dave Billwalk five miles an hour slower than Steve David. Billwalk said they needed to do some work on that boat after Tri-Cities. Looks like they might have some more work to do. Yeah, I'm not sure what happened here, Bill, but this is uh, this is about as far off the pace we've seen Bill walk all year long. J. Michael Kelly in the Beacon Plumbing. Remember, he's got a one-lap penalty for a lane infraction prior to the start of the race. So he's running with Bill Walk, but that is not a battle for position in the final. Bill Walk has that position. 
On board with Dave, looking back over at Jay Michael. You can see how rough the water is. Right flag for Steve David. On his fourth lap, 135.928 miles per hour. That's his second fastest lap here in the final. Crew chief Mike Hansen telling Steve David, just keep this thing on the water. You've got plenty enough lead. Bring her around. Back on board with Dave Vilwak from Monroe, Washington, 58 years old. A rough ride for his spirit of guitar this afternoon in Seattle. Eight wins here, but he's not going to see number nine today. That boat actually hopping a little bit to the left. And Steve David also dancing in the old boy Alberto Miss Madison. David has won here back-to-back -back races, going for the three-peat. Dave Vilwak has won here three times in a row, twice, but only one driver has ever won here four straight races, the late, great Bill Muncy. It's going to be three in a row for Steve David, and they will celebrate in Madison, Indiana. Checkered flag in the air, and Steve David has his third straight win in Seattle. And I tell you what, this is going to be a very happy second-place finisher, Jimmy Shane, to come off of this heat and beat the guys that he just beat. Nice finish there. And a tip of the hat to his crew chief, Tom Anderson, doing a fine job with that driver that's in his first full year as an unlimited driver. Good run for Brian Perkins in the 21. Albert Lee sponsored the race, they sponsored this boat, but they're gonna sponsor a party tonight. John Zimmerman didn't get the finish he was hoping for, but still a very successful day. To the Air National Guard victory lane, next. The 2012 Air National Guard Hydroplane Series has been brought to you by Air National Guard. Visit GoANG.com to learn more about exciting opportunities in your area. By Whispering Turbines, where life begins at 200 miles per hour. And by Peters and May. For professional management of your worldwide boat transport and logistics, remember Peters and May. Third straight win in Seattle for 58-year-old Steve David, and it will be a very popular victory. He's well-liked here in Seattle as he is throughout the Unlimited Circuit. There's his boat owner on the right. That's Art Oberto, and they will be celebrating tonight. So Steve David beats Jimmy Shane. Dave Vilwak gets third. Brian Perkins fourth. Then it was Zimmerman, Liddycoat, and Kelly. 15th career win for Steve. Steve, you and I talked before this final. You had a game plan. You nailed every mark that you needed to hit on this race course, including the start. That was unbelievable. Oh, uh, the Alberto folks, thank you, John, gave me one heck of a boat. I mean, uh, there's a lot of people that make this possible, and I just have the honor to, to drive this hydroplane and, uh, and drive my heart out. And our third win in a row at Seafair doesn't get any better than that. And Art Alberto, the namesake of the boat, is, is here with me. It doesn't get any better. Take a look at the driver points after the first four races. Steve David came here trailing in points. He leaves here leading in points. Good run for Jimmy Shane. Here's Mike. Jimmy, that was an excellent race. It wasn't what you were looking for, but Steve David pretty much snook at everybody at that start. Yeah, you know, we kind of kind of thought he was going to do that, and um, I was trying to give myself enough uh, enough time to speed up so he didn't have enough uh, boat lengths to come over, and he, he nailed it. He nailed the one-minute pin and came over legally. Man, he got it handed to him. He drove, drove one hell of a race. Now, here are the team national high point standings again. It's a three-team race at this point for the national championship. Bill walks in it, but he's not a happy guy here in Seattle. Dave, tell us what happened out there. I don't know. This bunch of guys came over and it's got a lot of water. Never even had a shot at it from the get go. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, there's too much going on in there, so I don't know what happened. You'd have to tell me. My partner enjoyed it. That was a fun one. It was exciting, Bill, and a well deserved win for Steve David with an excellent strategy for the start. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter and like us on Facebook to stay on top of the Air National Guard series. For Mike Allen, Steve Montgomery, and all the men and women around the course and on the crew, I'm Bill Weber. Thanks for having us in for the race, and so long from Seattle. Congratulations to Steve David.